video, we're going to have a look at the E.2. Now, you'll remember from the previous video, the E.2 is a directional antenna. And the directional antenna, with its router uh, situated inside the antenna, focuses its electromagnetic energy in the direction of the E node B or the base station of the mobile network operator. So I'm going to take down the E.1. Remember, the E.1 is an omnidirectional antenna. That omnidirectional antenna, as we saw, was having an issue with signal to interference and noise ratio. And this is probably the, the best way to describe as to what the best uh, antenna is for a situation that we find ourselves in over here. In other words, I have base stations to the south and to the west that are further away. And rather than being able to get a good signal from those with my omnidirectional antenna, they were causing interference and noise. In such a case, opting for a directional antenna, such as the E.2 with its router in built in, and focusing the energy to a particular base station is most probably, and we'll see, see on the results, most probably the correct decision. So at the end of this video, we're also going to have a look and see how the E.2 fed against the Teltonica that we had inside the, um, inside the house here. That was using the own antennas. And remember, I said that there's nothing wrong with the antennas that get supplied with the Teltonica. They're actually quite good antennas. However, like I said earlier, a unit with antennas inside a building will never fare as good as the same unit connected to an outside antenna due to the fact that we've got this huge attenuation of the electromagnetic signal trying to get inside the residence, inside a building. So let's go and take down the E.1 and replace it with the E.2. Right, so this is going to be the reverse procedure. The E.1, the omnidirectional is coming off and we're going to put the directional, the E.2, up on the mast. Remember now that the azimuth from there is 195 degrees. So I need to get, go to 15 degrees to, uh, to line up with the NOB. So without further ado, let's do it. Right, so here we are. We're going to be testing or sharing the test results uh, with you on the E.2. Now, we're downstairs from the lab. The lab is right up, uh, upstairs from here. And then the mast where the E.2 is installed is towards the edge of the roof over here. Now, let's have a look at the results. Um, I'm bringing the results up on the screen. You can see that the signal strength has improved to minus 51 dB, uh, dBm, that is. And uh, however, the reference signal receive power has improved to minus 76 dBm. The RSRQ re reference signal receive quality to minus 14, and we're going to discuss uh, RSRQ in a bit. And uh, then the signal to interference and noise ratio has actually improved, and, and it's improved quite a bit. It's in improved to 13.1, and that's actually what we expected. Because remember, we were, we were looking at the omnidirectional antenna being on the mast and suffering badly from signal to interference and noise. And then when, as I mentioned, we, we moved to a directional antenna, we're now focusing the electromagnetic energy towards the E node B, the, the tower, the uh, primary tower. And that, as I suspected, will improve our signal to interference and noise ratio dramatically. 
So you'll see there the, the download, download 24.19 megabits per second, upload 20.15. So let's compare that to the, uh, up on the screen, you'll see that previously we were, remember this is what we said, that the interference and noise that we were getting from moving the, uh, the E.1 from the window up onto the mast and where we saw that the uplink was suffering badly, 8.66 megabits per second. Now look at the improvement. That's a total of 132.67% from, uh, from 8.66 to 20.15. That's exactly what I suspected was going to happen, is that we are now no longer running retransmissions. We are no longer getting that serious bit heats due to the signal, uh, and, uh, signal interference and, and noise that's impacting on the signal. And then also the downlink, the downlink improved by 28% from uh, from a previously 18.87. Now remember the downlink were previously performing not that badly, but still 28% uh, 28.19% 20, improvement in the downlink speed to 24.19 megabits per second. Now let's look at the radio frequency improvement. The the reference signal received power improved by a, a total of 11 dB. Now that's substantial. Uh, and that is from an 80 and uh, minus 87 dBm previously to minus 67 dBm uh, now on the tower. So the reference signal uh, signal received quality that improved by 3 dB. And we're going to do a little comparison just uh, just now between the router that we had here internally and the uh, the E.2. Now the signal to interference and noise ratio. That you can see improved dramatically. 8 dB of improvement in the uh, between the E.1 on the mast and the E.2 now on the mast, uh, focusing the electromagnetic energy and excluding the uh, the noise and interference that's coming from uh, from the south and from the from the west, 270 degrees from uh, from where we are. And then uh, let's have a look at the uh, now at how what our improvement is between having the unit uh, the Teltonica unit here with its uh, with its antennas inside of the building versus the external antenna the E.2 the directional antenna there you can see that we improved now uh, just look at that the the unit wasn't performing that badly um, for being internal we were we were doing 10.78 megabits per second previously. And that was due, I believe, to the fact that we weren't having that much of a signal to interference and noise ratio. But yes, we, we had a we had a signal um, a signal problem, and uh, we'll see that in a moment. You'll see the improvement was 86.92% in the uplink and 88.24% uh, in the in the downlink. So substantial, and it's also substantial because it was it was solidly doing. Uh, 24, 25 uh, megabits per second in the in the downlink, uh, 20, 21, 22 in the in the in the uplink, and that was sort of the average uh, where we were. Let's look at the radio frequency improvement, a whopping thousand times, 30 dB improvement from uh, neg 106 dBm minus 106 dBm here in the in the room to minus 76 up on the mast, improvement of 30 dB. Now here is what I what I was refer, uh, referring to previously. The complex nature of calculating RSRQ sometimes trips us up a little bit because we can see improvement, yet our uh, rece uh, reference signal received quality uh, degraded by by two dB, and that's not a, a very good reference si uh, signal received quality. We need that to be lower than ten, minus ten, minus uh, minus nine, minus eight. Anything below 10 is better, and we're still sitting at minus 14. In fact, uh, uh, not, a, not an improvement up, up on the mast. But now look at the signal to interference and noise ratio. 10.8 dB, that's, uh, that is substantial. And that is what I contribute to the fact that we've got this huge 86.92 in the uplink, 88% from, uh, from where we were here, 88.24% uh, in the downlink which shows how, how much an external antenna can assist in improving 
same router, same contract, just moving it up on uh, on the mast, giving it uh, in this case in a suburban area. Um, our way to go is probably every time when you've got towers that are too far, that's not close in, so that you can take uh, advantage of the omnidirectional antennas, uh, omnidirectional capability, but you have a primary tower that is close to you, a e B that you can focus the energy on and get uh, the solid performance that you're seeing over here. Thank you for watching. Be sure to watch out for my next videos.